Hey, what's going on guys? This is Youth Man. Today, as you can see, not in my home theater, but I'm up here in Kansas City, Kansas. We're doing nine home theater tours in a period of just four short days. And today we're gonna to be looking at an incredible home theater. But before we actually get into the theater room, I wanna share with you just some really cool stuff that Grant's got going on here, kind of in a little recreation room. So Grant, yeah. thanks so much for inviting us over into your beautiful home. Kind of tell us what we got going on back here, man. Absolutely. So thanks for being here. Thanks for coming. So happy to show you this to you. This is a game room right? that uh, I put in my kids' playroom, and I wanted it to be a family video game playing, also a little bit of crazy time, which we'll show you here in a little bit. Yeah. And so I just had such fond memories of playing video games as a child and having especially multiplayer experiences and having a lot of a uh, lot of fun times, I wanted to recreate that and have that with my children too. Sure. Also, I get some game time in myself. <laughs> exactly. Um, but so I centered it around a, a 65 inch OLED. Cool. And I have a lot of my retro consoles here. That's mm -hmm. I saved all my consoles back from you know Atari, Nintendo. Nice. And I wanted to have all those set up, and so I. Uh, did a DIY sound setup with a 512. Cool, so um, we got three speakers up front, yep. two in-ceiling speakers here. Radian, coaxial for my mains. I have some, um, the, my sides are uh, Pioneer okay. and, and tops. Yeah, cool. And then I have an 18 inch DIY sub. Wait, wait, wait. You got an 18 inch sub for your kids to enjoy? <laughs> Dude, well, how cool uh, is that? They enjoy it a little too much while, maybe while they're sleeping. And so uh, the sound carries really well up to there. So since yeah. I do a lot of my gaming um, at night, sure. uh, you know, I use my headphones oh, actually yeah. most of the time and then i have a butt kicker mm -hmm. into my gaming chair nice which um adds a lot of the tactile yeah. that you might miss with the sub so sure. it works out really well so that way you don't disturb the family you still get that nice feeling exactly it's it, cool. and you know i really like the fidelity of the headphones um with the ps5 I actually did a lot mm -hmm. of stuff with um immersive audio with headphones yeah nice. um and i have the series x and the P gaming pc with the 3080 sure um nintendo i play that probably more than anything dude this and, is awesome um, yeah it's been a great deal of fun yeah. the kids have loved it that was kind of my covid project that yeah. i worked on while i was just you know couldn't go out and do <laughs> some things i wanted to do so i did this instead dude this is phenomenal even just the art pieces up here on the wall yeah. those are awesome man we got some super mario <laughs> brothers over here yeah, you bet. <laughs> and then honestly one of my favorite games of all time the legend of zelda man and i remember yeah. playing that on uh so that's a little different that's breath of the wild but i played legend of yeah. zelda when i was man i, I guess i was a teenager Ooh, yeah was maybe probably, in middle school probably 1987 okay dude you're making me feel really old <laughs> but yeah but i used to play that and I, that was literally one of my favorite games of all time so to see you kind of recreate this awesome space for your kids to enjoy, dude, that's phenomenal, man. So, it's and, been a ton of fun. So this is kind of totally different, too. I walked in, I'm like, what the heck? <laughs> this is rad. Like, There's give stuff me, hanging from give, the ceiling. Yeah, What's give me the, going on? kind of paint the picture here. What's happening Right. Here? Okay, so my kids have a, a lot of energy. Yeah. And, and they're, you know, two out of three of them, their, their brains just actually work differently yeah. and they so they think differently yeah. they have different needs for their activity level oh, yeah. and so i really wanted to provide for that and so we put basically kind of like a ninja line Dude. jungle gym course in the basement with uh, awesome. you know <laughs> a ton of different apparatus yeah. and that we can switch out they have a blast with it. This is actually the reason why I did this uh, <laughs> cover for the right. TV because they are literally swinging sure. around here wall to wall. Yeah. It gets crazy. Yeah. And um, it's been an awesome outlet for them. Sure. And I, I'm like, why didn't I do this earlier? I, I'll be honest, I wish I had that when <laughs> I was a kid because I was the, the high strung kid, so much energy. Yeah. And so for them to come home, yeah. maybe after a stressful day or, mm -hmm. you know, just whatever, they just need to wind down before yeah. you send them off to bed. Dude, just, they've got an incredible setup for you yeah. and your entire family you to enjoy some gaming, some, you know, music even in here. 
and then just some recreation. So yeah. I just thought that was super cool because this is literally the space right before we go into your incredible right, home right. theater. So should we check that out? Absolutely, let's Dude, do it. Take us in there, man. Here we go. So Grant, here we are in your incredible home theater. We've been hanging out now, listening to some demos, both music and movies for probably about the past hour. Mm -hmm. And first of all, you got an absolute killer setup here, brother. Thank you so much. It means a lot to say that. I mean, it is phenomenal. Not only just acoustically, audibly, visually, you got great products in here, but you've spent a lot of time really just developing the room. And so kind of first take us through on like dimensions of the room. So basic dimensions, 15 by 19 by eight. And you got a couple, couple inches off of that for ceiling, uh, sound isolation, probably seven foot eight. Sure. In. So as far as construction of the room, so we're like in a basement, I guess? That's right. The basement, uh, mostly concrete walls, stairwell, and then another half concrete wall over in the side. Gotcha. Uh, it's all sound isolated with, um, use the soundproofing company for okay. that. And um, I'm glad I did it. But all right. Yeah. Um, go into a little more of that right yeah, now. Yeah, go ahead. So, so it is, I used a combination of staggered studs, uh, decoupling with the foundation, and clips, channel, double drywall, glean, glue. <laughs> oh my goodness, um, man. The whole thing. Right. Um, really thick doors of inch and three quarter, and then we laminate another three quarter inch MDF on top of that with green glue. All right. Have to use a really heavy duty hinge for sure. that. Uh, double door system also. So you got an exterior door, interior door, kind of separating that's, that from the rest yep. of the house? Yeah, that's right. Cool. And um, it works well enough mm -hmm. for what I need it to do, which is to play a movie after the kids go to bed. Yeah. And have it sound like, kind of like, a little bit like thunder in their sure. room, but they can kind of sleep through it's it. It's kind of a low rumble. Low rumble, okay. and that's two floors away. Gotcha. And uh, there's nothing you can do about the base getting up to the kitchen. <laughs> My sure. wife assures me yeah. that things rattle right but it's so all I'm gl so glad i did it so that's interesting because you know base waves i guess are a lot longer and they just travel through walls and so a lot of guys want to know you know what i need to do to soundproof my room i'm not sure that's possible yeah. you know to totally soundproof it yeah and and what i would say to them is is that uh the biggest benefit to sound isolation is the lowering the noise floor yeah. inside of the room sure i think it makes a big difference in your experience with the movie mm -hmm. um there's something about coming into a space and then when you shut the door it's silent yeah. and then those those silent parts in the movie it really adds a lot of uh, of suspense to it mm -hmm. and so that's that's what the what, what i really appreciate about it sure um, it is a big headache. Mm. You have to consider then the HVAC, which I did struggle with for several years before I finally got it figured out. Okay. Um, every little hole, it's an aquarium and mm. it's, you know, every, the water is going to get out and you got to plug it all. It's gotcha. But, um, I'm so glad that I did it here. Yeah. And one thing you and I were talking about earlier too, is that not only do you want to try to keep the sound from escaping, but you also mentioned you don't want sound coming in, right? That's right. Um, just again, keeping that noise floor of the room down, mm -hmm. and it's like when the kids are upstairs running yeah, exactly. around. Exactly, the, the kids are are always running around, yeah. and the kitchen is right above me. It's a okay. wood floor. Sure, you know those those pa impacts go right through. So sure. I did do additional treatment mm -hmm. on the subfloor with okay. double drywall, green glue, yeah, etc. Did everything I can to decouple that ceiling, yeah. sure. and. Um, you can still hear somebody if they're really pounding away. Right. But it's not going to, it, again, totally separate that, yeah. but it really cuts out most it, of that. It helps a lot. It's, awesome. it's just enough. Very cool. So let's kind of go around your room. We're going to talk about yeah. everything in your home theater. You've got so much going on. So first, let's just start off with the screen. Tell us about that size and uh, kind of what's going on on there. Yeah. So the size is 110 inch wide. It is... Um, a Seymour AV frame, okay. and it's in lighter Neo fabric. That's mm -hmm. uh, Unity Gain. And, and what's Unity Gain? Does it give us more brightness out of it, I guess? Or it's just saying it's an even, uh, even gotcha. gain. Okay. It's a 1.0 gain. It's probably a little okay. bit less than that. Maybe it's 0. Gotcha. 0.9. So if it was a higher probably. gain, then that would be more. Bright, yeah, more brightness. Okay. And um, cool. and this doesn't give you more brightness, but 
Um, I'm kind of really sensitive to uh, speckles okay. and sheen that can yeah. be on the screen. Sure. And so typically a gain treatment will um, kind of enhance that or it, it'll accentuate have, that. Like little little bright spots mm -hmm. that might reflect back at you, and I that just kind of bothers me yeah, a little cool. bit more. So. I'm, it's a compromise, like yeah. a lot of things are in the room. Mm -hmm. I'm losing brightness, but then I'm not bothered by the sparkles. Yeah, sure. And uh, it, every little decision is a compromise. Well, your screen is plenty so. bright enough, because yeah. again, you've got a completely light controlled room. You don't have any ambient light. True. So you don't need that extra gain, so. Yeah, another thing I did is black out the front, I don't know, third or fourth of the room with black velvet. Yeah. It went a little crazy in my, in my uh, Wife will tell you it was it was quite an endeavor. Yeah. Very difficult to work with those the, yeah. the fabric um, with the velvet and I don't know probably a million staples. Mm -hmm. um, so that's a pretty tedious process, I guess. Very tedious and also incredibly worth it. Mm -hmm. um, I noticed right away, and I was I'm so glad I did it. Yeah. I it, it had a tremendous value to the JVC black floor that was already there, and yeah. it, it kind of justified the purchase in a lot of ways. Cool, very cool. And honestly, during this tour, we've seen nine home theater tours, and a lot of guys have done that. One guy, he calls it the black hole because his whole yeah. room is velvet. Yeah. Um, so I'm surprised you actually found any. Um, if y'all built it about the same time, because <laughs> yeah. he used it all up. So he, you were he talking. Came to my room first. <laughs> <laughs> so you had shared with us earlier. Kind of what's going on? There's a couple of little spots up here in the ceiling. They're oh, kind of yeah. open, so kind of tell us about that. So those are <laughs> HVAC vents. I used to have diffusers in there, mm -hmm. and it just, it's one of those things when you, when you do a velvet treatment that, okay, I took care of this area, now mm. that bothers me. Okay, I took care of that area, and now that bothers so me. So we're talking you light can, reflecting maybe yeah, from the projector. Any 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 little thing you mm -hmm. it stands out and you notice it. So I just decided to take the diffusers out. Gotcha. I found out that I didn't really need them anyway. Yeah. Um, and in fact, I reversed flow on my HVAC system, which mm -hmm. was one of the things I was speaking about okay. that I, I helped to solve sure. my HVAC and noise floor issues. Yeah. I reverse flow, so now that is actually um, how where the air goes out. So I don't need the air to be louvered yeah. towards the seating area anymore. There. Yeah. I so gotcha. I took the took that out, and I just put velvet over the inner parts of it. It mm -hmm. totally disappears and doesn't bother me anymore. It made me go crazy. Yeah. And then there was another little spot up there. So you've got what maybe three. Um, Three can lights. Can lights yeah. that are kind of coming down onto your screen. Yeah, it's another thing that, <laughs> well, it's just one thing leads to another. And sure. so I was just seeing a little bit of reflection on the bottom of the can light. Yeah. So I, I did little flaps of black velvet just to shield that from my eyes. Yeah, and so those just kind of hang down a little. I just never little would have bit, thought of something inches. like that. Yeah. Until you get crazy. But it, Well, but honestly, it's those little details. So when we're watching a movie and the lights went out, guess what? All attention was up there on the screen. Yeah. So I think right. it was definitely well worth that. Yeah, and I, you know, that's kind of what I want. All your attention there, like a, a level of immersion mm -hmm. in the experience. And I, I can remember when I was four years old walking out of uh, The Return of the Jedi yeah. in the theater. Yeah. And I remember walking outside, mm -hmm. opening the door of the theater, and the light hitting me and being like, oh, Mm. Oh, this is actually real life here. Yeah, I was just in another place, yeah. and and now, oh, I'm just reoriented, and and that experience never left me, That's and cool. I've never forgotten about it. And every step of the way, when I was thinking about this place for ten years, wow, that was in the back of my mind. Yeah. Like I want to be there as much as I can. You know, the level of immersion that I can that I can afford and yeah. I can do in this space. That's what I want, and so that's, that's awesome. just a part of it. Yeah. The black velvet. So talking about the screen, I think you've got masking up there as well, right? That's right, yeah, it's a native 235 screen, mm -hmm. so I do have the um, the panels to make it into 16 to nine, sure. and they're manual panels, yep. and so um, they're magnetic. put one on the left and one on the right, mm -hmm. and they just snap in place? Yeah, that's right, and it's um, it works just fine. It doesn't take that long. Yeah. I'd be lying if I said I didn't want a really <laughs> fancy oh, yeah. automated 
masking sure. system, that would hit be, one button and whoo, that'd be pretty slick. That's it's cool. It's yeah. expensive, but yeah, <laughs> very cool. So I can see I would definitely be going with the manual as well. So that's super cool. So let's talk about maybe what's behind the screen. Sure. Because you got some serious horsepower back there. So what's going on? So I have an all JTR uh, setup, mm -hmm. and my LCR channels are the uh, JTR Noesis mm -hmm. 212 HTs. Okay. These are the older HTs before we brought in the HTRs. Gotcha, which is and, what I have. So I've right. got the 212 HTRs. Yep. So it's the same idea with being three way speakers. Gotcha. And um, I have my right and left channels outside of my screen. They're mm -hmm. a little bit wider than uh, normal spec, but I kind of like it that way. Yeah. I have um, eight uh, matching surrounds. And they are JTR S8, the, the LP. The slanted, the slanted eight. Okay. Eight. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And so my uh, final configuration is 7.2. Point four, okay. and my point two is the uh, JTR <laughs> Orbit Shifter LFUs. Orbit Shifter. Orbit Shifter. No, it that is crazy. Orbits. You know you're in for it. Yeah, so we actually heard another set of Orbit Shifters. So your room That's is right. smaller, and holy cow, man, this whole, because yeah. you don't have any butt kickers, you don't have any transducers, no boss, but yeah. this whole couch, I mean, I'm feeling it in my legs, I'm feeling it in my chest, yeah. even back there. They pound. So what is they it? A do. fifteen, I think, or no? It's I'm sorry, an eighteen. 18. Yeah. That's right. And so yeah, it's a u very unique subwoofer. Yeah. It's it's a front loaded horn okay. subwoofer. Yeah. And uh, it's it's very large. It's kind of like a mini fridge yep. size. Or it's fifty inches tall. It's I want to say it's thirty six wide mm -hmm. and then twenty two and a half deep. Yeah. And it so it has a single eighteen, but that single eighteen is a high. That's it's a high excursion, right. probably over thirty millimeters. Yeah. And uh, it's kind of like a folded a little bit. So the path, I want to say it's maybe 14 foot path. Holy cow. I'm not, it's like I'm, the I'm, inside track of where yeah. the base is traveling. So it does add quite a bit of delay that you wow. have to add in when you're okay. calibrating. Just something to consider, especially if your AVR mm -hmm. doesn't have enough, um, enough delay okay. for it. So I use um, the... Uh, the EQ that I use is DBX, um, Drive Rack Pro, okay. um, PA2, and that, that does my subwoofer calibration. Sweet. Um, but so they put out uh, a lot of output above 22.5, <laughs> which yeah. is like their knee there. Sure. And below it, it acts as kind of like a sealed 18, I okay. would say. Yeah. So still get good output. Sure. It won't give you the ULF of like a 4,000 ULF. Yeah. But that's it, a beast too. But it'll do yeah. uh, what you experience anyway. The tactile feel is kind of what I really like. I also like there's something about the horn sound mm -hmm. for me that's like really tight, punchy, clean. Yeah. And I just kind of addicted to it. Yeah. And in fact, in 2012, uh, Jonathan Arkea yeah. had me over for it. And the first time I ever met him for a right. subway for me and Jeff. Permanian JTR sure. was there, yeah. and Mark Seaton yeah. was there. The and sound, yeah. it's the first time I met Sheldon and all those guys. Yeah. And it was such a blast. We were in Jonathan's his older house, actually, okay. before the one he has now, in his basement. And at the end of the night, this was a blind subwoofer yeah. test. And at the time, I had some you know, 15 inch sub and sure. Jonathan's, I'm saying this thing, this is, this, this thing is pounding, pounds. baby. This is awesome. You have not, <laughs> and Jonathan's like, just come, yeah. just, just come and, yeah. and figure something yeah. out. At the end of the night, Jeff Permanian's at the controls of dual orbit shifters gotcha. in his basement. Yeah. And it was like being underwater. Mm. We then went upstairs to Jonathan's kitchen mm -hmm. and we heard crunch, 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 crunch. That was the sound of his tiles broken, the grout. No. Completely just <laughs> broken those tiles. <laughs> so he's sitting there trying to like put this puzzle back together, what? thinking his wife's not going to notice. Oh my goodness. He starts going to the bathroom and there's like the pipes are leaking. No. I mean, it was serious? It was threatening the, at, the structural cow. integrity of his home. Oh my god. So goodness. obviously I had to have it. <laughs> obviously. Um, and so... Uh, no regrets on that yeah. purchase. Like, Holy cow. Gotta go big on the subwoofer. Yeah. It adds so much to the experience. Awesome. And of course, I'm surrounded by bass heads yeah. around here. Yeah, there's quite a few. <laughs> there's a few, <laughs> yeah. 
Um, but uh, yeah, Phenomenal. I, I love my subs. Well, we were watching several scenes. We were watching the, is it Batman versus Superman? Yeah, the trailer. Oh for, my for goodness. Batman Superman. That's a lot of Incredible things. LFE there. Yeah. We watched um, Power Rangers. I had never right. seen that scene and Shane from Spare Change. Okay. I know he's mentioned it a lot of times. Yeah, he's like, that's okay. my one of my go-tos. Yeah. I'm like, kind of interesting. I wrote it down. Like this yeah. whole trip I've been writing now. Got to buy. Oh, need to get this. Great demo. Mm -hmm. Here's what this does. That was one of them, man. Super, super tight bass. Gosh, but yeah. man, you can really, really feel it in your chest. Absolutely. I, I love how that movie is mixed mm -hmm. start to finish it's so well done yeah and especially the surround especially the atmos the use of positional audio sure. you know at the very beginning the spaceship flies over yeah. and actually before that even when the the, the aliens breathing okay and, right. and you know that comes right. in it you, you just it takes you there yeah and the, adding the atmos layer to that, yeah. uh, I have no regrets there sure. either. That that adds a lot to the experience. There's a tension there that's it's evident right away, right. And, and having having the extra layer of speakers, having the Atmos, mm -hmm. it does a lot yeah. for that immersion. So Grant, looking around your room, mm -hmm. it's obvious even just by talking in here. And when you first walk in, this is a different sounding space than than the the kids' playroom and your entertainment room out there. So kind of walk us through the acoustic treatment that you've uh, put in this room and kind of the thought behind that. Sure. Well, first of all, I did do um, a layout plan. Um, AVS Forum many years ago was having um, a basic layout plan. Okay. And part of that was uh, a treatment plan. Mm -hmm. So uh, first of all, the locations of the speakers and the seats and second was where to place treatments and what kind of treatments. Okay. I was only able to buy one of those fancy treatments, <laughs> and those are on my first reflections. Okay. Those are Quest Perf Sorber treatments. Okay, cool. And the rest of everything is DIY. Nice. And my uh, front wall is Select Sound Black. Uh, that's Owens Corning. Mm -hmm. It's one inch. And it has a three mil poly, another one inch layer. Okay. My uh, treatments on the back half of the room mm -hmm. are Owens Corning 705 with FRK foil and okay. uh, probably 30, 40% of the room. Gotcha. And I have uh, my riser is made as a base trap as a continuous cavity with cool. pink fluffy. Okay. Um, I have several diffusers along the walls where the the base waves are increased so that uh, base trap can do its thing. Okay. Um, I have uh, three GIK 242 panels mm -hmm. above me that I added when I added my Atmos channels. Cool. And uh, does that cover it? Yeah, I think I think that's about it. And um, then I know you had mentioned there were a couple things that you wanted to change, but haven't got around to yeah. it. Tell us about that. Yeah, well, um, I have <laughs> upgraded my my speakers over time. Yeah. So our speakers are our, our rooms rather a work in progress. Sure, hundred percent. And so my first layout specced my surrounds way far back in the room. Mm -hmm really high up. This yeah. is kind of just before Atmos came in. Okay. And I've since moved on and moved those speaker locations out more, much more forward sure. and lower and added the Atmos layer. But to add, add that have, separation, that bubble. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. To add that bubble, that immersion. And I have these little four panels mm -hmm. in my room that right. I was hoping nobody would notice, <laughs> but I, I, I wanted to redo them before yeah. you, before you came. Yeah. Didn't have time to do it. It's one of those things that there's just, there's always something to do 100%. in the theater. But, and then that just, and there's always, always something else that we want to do for our rooms yeah. too. Yeah. Um, we can enjoy them, but we're also always just looking out for yeah. what's new, what's next. Absolutely. And those, it's the little things that we do everywhere yeah. that kind of add up to the whole experience too. So I'm always just 
thinking about it. I'm always kind of a little bit obsessed with it yeah. and just looking out for those little things that I can do to add mm. to the experience. And I think I think we all can relate to that. And it's funny because yeah. we were having this conversation and you had mentioned, you're like, man, I, you know, we were bragging like, man, this sounds incredible. And you're thinking, but I've got this space between this side yeah. surround yeah, and this exactly. rear surround. And, and should I put one there or should I, I put a, a front wide and... And so it was kind of interesting. We were watching, what was the clip? with the Power Rangers okay. again. With that. So watching yeah. the Power Rangers, and it's one of the last demos that we did. Yeah. And there's a scene where the camera spins around and that mm. sound goes from one side all the way around, comes right. around. And Tony was like, you know, why don't you just sit here? You come up and sit in the yeah. primary listening position. Close your eyes. You listen to that. And do you hear a gap in you know, from one speaker to the next. And what was kind of like yeah. your conclusion there? I did not hear a gap. Yeah. Uh, so Tony just sent me some money. Thanks, <laughs> thanks brother. Um, but yeah, I have that, the widest gap between, mm -hmm. between those speakers. I thought, oh gosh, it'd be nice to fill that in yeah. or it'd be nice to add wides or add this or add that. Sure. And sometimes there's a, there's a perceived need and then mm -hmm. sometimes the, the actual experience maybe isn't better by yeah. it. So, yeah. so <laughs> that's, it's good to know and have a little reality check you know, yeah. set in. That's super cool. Yeah, I, I could not hear. It, it panned perfectly to yeah. my ears. Yeah, so, made yeah. a complete circle. It yeah. didn't seem like there was a gap there. And so kind of moving on to your equipment. So back here on the top, we've got this pretty awesome projector. So tell us a little bit about that. Sure, that's a JVC, it's a NX7. Okay. And I've I've had that for several years. I Great projector. It's a great projector. I love, I think it's the first projector that I've had that's kind of basically plug and play for HDR, which has been a thorn in the side of, you know, sure. projector owners for several years. Sure. Um, I like, the way that it handles my size screen and non-gain screen. Yeah. Um, always looking to the future though, of course yeah. the laser line just came out yes. for JVC and NZ you know, series. I'm I'm looking at it yeah. along with a bigger screen. Okay. And so what you know, what's the big regret with my home theater? Well uh, I I don't wish I went with a smaller screen, that's for yeah. sure. So it's it's a I, you know, it's a, honestly, it's a great size screen, but as you were talking, you've got a little bit more room, not much. Yeah. So you can go maybe how wide do you think? I think I can squeeze in 130. Okay. 130 wide. 30 so be, wide. So what yeah. would that maybe be diagonal? Do you know? Uh, I don't. I can tell you okay. that my, um, my 110 inch wide 2.35 image is about 120 inches okay. diagonal. So it'd be and maybe so 130, then, 140, something. Yeah. Like, okay. So then if I cut that, I'm, I'm happy with my 2.35 image. And this is just talking about compromises yeah, here. Yeah, sure. That yeah. I'm a little unhappy with my 16 and 9 image because okay. it's only maybe 100 inches right. diagonal yeah. then for that. And uh, so, yeah, along with the laser mm -hmm. projector, more lumens. Right. Bigger screen, longer lifespan. You yeah, got like what, ten thousand hours, twenty thousand. I think it's like twenty thousand. Yeah, to get to yeah, like, and then you're only at fifty percent. <laughs> but that's phenomenal, though. Yeah. So I've been eyeing them too. Oh, yeah. Man. Dreaming. But here's the thing. Mm -hmm. Tony saved you some money, so yeah. that on the speaker, so now you can dump it towards easily that. easily justified. Yeah. yeah. Did he really save me money then? I don't know about that, Tony. <laughs> yeah. Super cool. So we got an awesome projector, great screen. Possibly may go a little bit bigger. Mm -hmm. um, and then take us back. You've got a kind of an interesting location of where your equipment rack is. Take us into that area. Kind of tell us what's happening in there. Sure. And so, uh, you know, I got, I scoured the forums, AVS. I went to people's homes and I just took the best ideas from everyone. Yeah. And I hope that people were able to take a lot of ideas from me too, even yeah. just locally. Sure. And you know, we all just take the, the parts we love from Absolutely. each other's theaters and implement them yeah. into our own. Yeah. And one of the things that I really liked was the idea of getting my projector out of the room for mm -hmm. the heat and the noise. Yep. And also, I didn't want it to shake from footfalls from the kitchen gotcha. either. Yeah. If it, it was, was like mounted. ceiling mounted, yeah. If yeah, it was yeah. ceiling mounted on a pole, I'd seen that happen sure. in some in some rooms, and I thought, oh boy, that's jarring. Yeah. And so I did uh, put it behind my theater, okay, 
And outside? So outside my theater, mm -hmm. it shines through a glass porthole. Okay. And I made a projector shelf for it that uses IB3 clips to decouple the shelf. Okay. And I, I use Serenity mat on top of that, and I've never had any shaking from the projector itself, even right. though the orbit shifters can get busy. It yeah. will shake my screen sometimes. <laughs> oh, absolutely. Yeah, there's, there's really, no, people ask me all the time, Michael, does this your screen shake? Well, I'm like, yeah, my whole house is shaking. Of course my, <laughs> my screen's gonna shake. My whole house is shaking. Yeah. I think my wife said that uh, when I was doing the demos the other day, mm -hmm. Uh, trying to figure out what I was going to do for you guys. It was sound like an ogre was doing like really no. naughty things to our house. <laughs> so uh, yeah. it was moaning and groaning and <laughs> twisting really, and turning. That's really awesome. not right. <laughs> That's hilarious. So equipment inside there. What we got going? So my processor is a little bit older. It's a Denon X7200. Okay. I am looking at upgrading to maybe the Monoprice HTP1. Yeah. A Great big processor. reason to do it for me would be getting some EQ in the Dirac, and um, I might not have to use my DBX unit gotcha. for my sub bass. Because sure. right now I'm not running any EQ on my loudspeakers at all. Yeah, that's awesome because they sound phenomenal. Thank you. And I was still, you know, I was going to say, you know, to that point, I, I think that having it's set up properly is mm -hmm. so important yeah. from the get-go. Yep. Try not to rely on yep. DSP to mm -hmm. fix problems sure. in the room. So if you can have the layout done yeah. and the physics right to start out, yeah. and that includes mechanical treatments too around the room like mm -hmm. I tried to do. Right. And you can always do better with that too probably. Yeah. You know, that's another thing that I'm looking at too. Um, but so that's my processor and then I have uh, uh, Yamaha okay. MX A5000 yeah, for my the amplifier. the big beefy amp. It's a big beefy amp. It's uh, I picked it up uh, locally at Ryan's uh, actually cool. amp, and my and, and just my my speakers were on other friends here, Sheldon's. Yeah. So I, I you know used gear around the local community. It's it's kind of actually fun to swap sure. that around. Yeah, and. So that amplifier is 11 channel amplifier, probably 150, 200 watts and mm -hmm. eight ohms. Plenty of power. And I'm looking at upgrading my amplifier, at least for my front channels, okay. to a Hypex a Class D module. Gotcha. Um, in the near future, I have that on order. Nice. So that'll take care of my LCR, which okay. will take the line the, share yeah, the the grunt of, it, sure. of my 11 channel amplifier. All right. Uh, for source, I have a OPPO 203. Okay and uh, just various streamers. Um, sure. Another project for this winter would be probably an HTPC. Okay, so maybe do some like Plex or you, what do you want to do with that? Yeah, you nailed it. That, yeah. that is what I'm looking at. Yeah. Is and probably the only guy <laughs> in this whole tour that used an actual yeah. physical disc for his demo. I did it. Well, you know what's funny yeah. is when you walk back there, Tony made a little snide remark. He's yeah. Like, physical disc, what? what's that? <laughs> They make Cause those? Because they, they've all got Plex, they've got yeah. um, the Kodi, I've seen all of it, HTPC, yeah. and they're playing the raw files, and and I'm a bit jealous of that, because you know I'm know. starting to work on that myself, and they're teaching yeah. me. But the cool thing is that even if you don't understand, or you've got questions, you've got an incredible network of guys here That's right. that love this, they're passionate about it, and more than willing to come over and say, man, let's set that thing up, let's get it right, and, and so that's super, super cool. And then Outside. Oh, actually, tell us about the, yeah. the media storage. That's cool. Oh, yeah. That's back there, too, in the projector room. Mm -hmm. And that's another idea I got from AVS Forum. I just saw a picture of it on somebody's yeah. thread. And it was um, it was a lot smaller. Mm. And it was, uh, it was mounted into the wall. Mm -hmm. But I thought, man, why not just go floor to ceiling yeah. with a slide-out media storage? That's awesome. And, of course, I found out kind of why. It's because it weighs a lot. Yeah. And, because I, and then I had to go back <laughs> in and I had to put rails on it and I had to get the like heavy-duty casters yep. on it. But in the end, mm. I love it. It's kind that's of like awesome. a trick thing that's kind of hidden in the wall. Nobody knows it's there until I pull it out. It's kind of a neat right. little party trick. So That is super um, cool. Holds a lot of media. Yep. Those physical discs that yeah. they still make. Hey, and it, and honestly, <laughs> that's what I use most of the time. I'm yeah. a 4K guy, Blu-ray guy, and so once we leave that room, then take us behind there. What kind of what's happening? Sure, it's just a mechanical storage area behind there, and it provides just really easy access to the back of my rack. Yeah. You always think, 
well, I'm done. And you're no. lying to yourself. You're yeah. not done at all. Yeah. There's always something you're going to be switching out, always yeah. something you're going to be looking at sure. doing. I'm back there all the time making tweaks. Mm -hmm. And it's super easy yeah. access. Couldn't be easier. That was a big thing in my home theater. I wanted to have easy access behind my screen. So I put actually shocks on it so I can lift up my screen Very and get cool. to it. And then I wanted to have access behind it because, like you said, if you buy a new player, if you buy a new amplifier, a new AVR processor, whatever, that is a royal pain to just kind of, I, oh. I can't tell you how many times I had a, uh, like an owner's manual laid out on the ground <laughs> yeah. or on my phone yeah. and I'm reaching back there going, okay, one, two, three, four <laughs> HDMI, plug it in, one, mm. two, three, you know, these pre-outs, mm. that's right. pain. So being able to have access behind there, that's super, that's super huge. convenient. So let's talk about seating. So before yeah. you mention anything <laughs> about it, just recently somebody asked me, they said, hey, Michael, you've been to a lot of home theater tours over the years and you've seen and sat in a lot of chairs. Are there any of them that stand out and and uh, is there like maybe one brand that, that seems like everybody's got? And I said, no, not really. So when we came up here to this trip and I'm going through nine home theater tours mm -hmm. in four days, um, just earlier today, Brad. we sat down in his seats and I was like, immediately I was like, yeah. Oh, this is nice. <laughs> nice. It reminded me of, you know, that big plush kind oh. of um, like a lazy boy chair, mm -hmm. but it was theater seats. I'm like, this is different. Mm -hmm. I immediately knew. I mean, I've got nice seats. They're soft, but mine are kind of more firm. And his just kind of like, he just sat oh. down in it. Mm -hmm. And so I told Brad, I'm like, look, dude, you've got some killer seats. I yeah. really like this. Then we come over to Grant's house and we walk in and I'm, I sit down and I immediately go, Oh man, yeah. dude, and I had that same experience. So yeah. these are super, super comfortable. Tell us about these. These are Berkline. Mm -hmm. uh, so already we're breaking hearts because yeah. you can't <laughs> yeah. buy them anymore. Yeah. But but they're they're Berkline Directors series, okay. and I got these used. Yeah, um, they're real leathers, and they've held up extremely well. Yeah. Uh, I love these seats because. First of all, when you get a little older, you could use a little lumbar support. I'm yeah, telling you, it sure, helps. Sure. The other thing I really like about these is when I lean back, I feel like my head is just exactly right in nice. line with the seat. Yeah, cool. And or any, with the screen. Yeah, yeah, it, yeah, with the screen, I mean. Sure. And that's a, a tip that I give anybody mm -hmm. is like, if you can get an, an automated headrest, right. that might sound a little bit silly. Sure. It won't I've got be those on, yeah. Yeah. yeah, it won't be silly at all when you're yeah. using it, and you're going to really appreciate sure. your, your head being right in line yeah. and not having to, to look up or down or anything. It's it, you'll, but yeah. I just got lucky with these. It's just perfect Right, it's for just me. got the right curvature and kind of mm -hmm. right tilt for your head. So definitely, but finding comfortable seating and finding something that, that just is not, because you're wanting to watch a movie, spend yeah. hours in here possibly, listen to music or watching your favorite show. Have a comfortable seating, man. I it's, love it. It's huge. Yeah. And I, I went with the couch okay. and recliner in the back because I just wanted to put as many people in That's the back. Right. The back is just kind of a bonus. It's overflow a, kind of it's deal. It's a yeah. compromised seating location. Yeah. You can see it's right back up against the wall. The base yeah. is super duper hot, which is yeah. the way some of the base heads around here sure. like it. Yeah. But it's gonna be my boomy rear back there seats, exactly. My, my rear speakers are right in, in your head. It's incredibly compromised so i just decided let's go with the couch get as many kids in there yeah. as we can nice. and uh that is a natuzi couch that i got okay. used as well yeah and getting this thing out of the the guy's house was an extraction right. procedure That's and it funny. was it's the heaviest couch gotcha. it's a steel frame that i've ever wow. ever <laughs> tried to lift right. my friend tim is also a, a member of our local yeah. group. Mm -hmm. Helped me get that couch down here. Right. It's the heaviest piece of furniture that either one of us have ever lifted. Too funny. And we had to take this door off. That's that, you know, I mean, it's, yeah. it's got to be a 150 pound door sure. probably to just to get that couch through. Yeah. I can guarantee you that when it comes time for that mm. couch to come out of here, right. Me and Tim are gonna get a saw. Just cut it up, and man, it is not out out in one piece. Yeah. But but that Definitely. was quite the thing getting that couch and love it. But yeah. whoo, super super heavy, super heavy. So interesting. You mentioned the door and something I forgot to have you kind of share on. 
you've actually got your side speaker mounted to this massive door. Oh, right. What's up with that, man? Yeah, so um, most speaker locations for sides are at 90 degrees mm -hmm. to 120. Mm -hmm. And that would put me p potentially right behind my door. Sure. And I had them even further back than that before, and I didn't, I didn't like it. Sure. And I tried 90 on speaker stands, and I, I filled around with this for a long time and tried many different things before I was happy with it, right. just to make sure that I really liked it, and I did. I like my side surrounds further forward. Just a little bit forward, yeah. yeah. 80 to 85 degrees. Okay. Well, that puts it right on the door. Yeah. And it was a, a thing. I mm. had to, I had to wire through the the door, get a drill about this long right. to oh my goodness. snake the cable in, yeah. make sure I mounted the, the JTR heavy very speaker securely. Yeah, yeah. very securely. Absolutely worth it. It's never fallen off, nice. even though, you know, this door gets opened and closed like crazy sure. with little kids. Oh, sure. It, it's no regrets there yeah. and no regrets with my speaker location either. Awesome. Well, Grant, I mean, we've covered a lot. Is there anything that maybe I missed or maybe um, something that you would, if you could go back to the beginning of this, is there anything maybe you'd even change? Yeah, you know, the, I think not having my, I kind of already covered this, but not having the dipoles mm -hmm. near the ceiling yeah. and near the back sure. was, that, that was the biggest uh, thing that was taking the performance of my room down. Right. And that was a journey over many years getting mm -hmm. it to where it is now. Yeah. So I first of all changed the bed locations. I upgraded my speakers to JTR. Yep. And then I, I've upgraded my Atmos speaker several times. I've had DIY volts. Okay, right. I've had JBL SCS8s. And now I have matching JTR S8s. Right. It's just kind of an evolutionary process. Sure. And, you know, and we're, we kind of never stop looking. Mm -hmm. We never stop thinking how we're oh, going to yeah. improve our rooms. Yeah. And it's just, it's just a, a blast. It's a pretty cool hobby. It's a really fun hobby. And I love going around to just the local people here. Yeah. They all have something special. And we all take the best parts that we like of each other's theaters yeah. and, and take them and make them our own. It's yeah. just a total blast. And honestly, that's exactly why I do home theater tours like this. Because I want you guys to get inspiration from the things that you see. Maybe there's something that you're like, man, I love the way you made that drawer, that cabinet. Or yeah. I like the way you put your speakers outside of your screen and have them angled in. And, or I, maybe I like the velvet and something that kind of sparks your interest or something you may not have thought of. You can implement that and it'll inspire you guys. Well, I hope you've enjoyed this series here in Kansas City. We've been to Kansas City, Kansas and Kansas City, Missouri. And there's some incredible home theaters out here. So make sure you're subscribed to the channel because we've got nine awesome home theaters in this series. Well, guys, I hope you enjoyed the video. As always, God bless and we'll catch you in the next video.